Today I'm going to show you my Blizzard Hybrid Ice Shards build and it absolutely slaps inside of Diablo 4. In the end game, this build is really, really strong, has great AoE damage, and just is overall very satisfying and just has a really nice flow of rotations with your skills. Welcome back guys, War here. Today I'm going to show you guys my Blizzard hybrid endgame build for Diablo 4 for the Sorceress. And I really, really enjoy this build. It took me a little while to put it together. So we're going to go over everything that you guys need for the skills, the gear, as well as the Paragon board. So let's get right into it. Now, uh, when it comes to Blizzard, there's a few different variants that you can use for Blizzard, okay? A lot of them run no core skill, no basic skill. Some run a basic skill. I'm running a core skill. Some run neither one of those and they run an ultimate like uh, Deep Freeze, but mine's going to be a hybrid with Ice Shards because I think it's just the most efficient and just flows really, really well. And this is going to kind of be a little bit speedier. It's a little bit more of a speed variant in some ways. So let's go over everything. So just like uh, typical Sorcerers, we're going to have two points in Firebolt. Now, again, you need at least one point. You can definitely change it to whatever you want, whether you want it in Frostbolt or Enhanced Firebolt one point in our class it really doesn't matter but uh we just need the two points there and at least one point in fireball for the enchantment to get down to our core skills now we're doing ice shards all the way into destructive ice shards so that way we get the vulnerability when you're hitting five or more or hitting somebody with five ice shards to make them vulnerable now i have maxed this okay i put five points into ice shards now you may be asking well why war blizzard is going to be doing all your damage well blizzard itself is not doing its damage it's all the spikes from blizzard that's doing a lot of damage so we actually don't need a whole lot of extra points in blizzard we only need one so because this is a hybrid build when blizzard is triggering we're going to be doing a lot of damage with ice shards so that's why we have ice shards maxed out next we're going to come down to our defensive skills now what is a sorcerer build without every single defensive skill you have okay so we're going to be taking flame shield into shimmering flame shield this is just going to give us some life back as well as some much needed uh immunity or you know unstoppable to break that crowd control we're taking points into teleport i really want to get more points than this in teleport i just didn't have anywhere else to put it uh, I really need to get the extra points from the gear just to get this to at least five. But teleport into Shimmering Teleport for more damage reduction. Um, next, three points into Elemental Attunement. On a crit strike, you have a chance to reset your cooldowns. This triggers a lot more than you think it does. And I actually really, really like it. However, I will say if you really only like the one point here for the chance, you can really just put the extra points into Teleport to reduce that cooldown. It is totally up to you. Either one is really good. Then, of course, three points in the glass cannon. Everything is going to be frozen and chilled and just not moving. So I'm not too worried about the damage that we take. We get increased damage. It's huge. Uh, into ice armor, into enhanced ice armor for just more mana regen. And then max out Frost Nova. You need this completely maxed out. This is the bread and butter of the build. Okay, we're going into Mystical Frost Nova for the uh, vulnerability for four seconds and six seconds on a boss. Very, very huge. A lot of our damage is going to come from monsters being vulnerable. Uh, down to Conjuration. We're not taking any actual skills. It's all passes. So we're taking three points into Precision Magic to give us a higher lucky hit chance, which is going to be good. Then we have one point into Align the uh, Elements. And then three points into Mana Shield for the damage reduction. Sorcerers naturally are a little bit more squishy. This is just really, really good. And with the cost of Blizzard being 36 on top of Ice Shards, we're going to get to that 100 mana cap really fast. So this is always going to be up for 15% damage reduction. Now, you may be asking, well, why don't I have at least one point in protection? We are going to be getting so many kills in our Paragon board from frozen enemies. That is going to trigger our legendary node, which is always going to give us a barrier on top of our ice armor giving us a barrier. So I'm not too concerned about having protection. However, if you did really want it, I would take one point out of precision magic and put it in here. But you don't really need this. Next, down to our mastery skills. We got one point into Icy Veil to make barriers last a little bit longer, but more importantly, we're taking three points into Cold Front. While we have a barrier active, we apply more chill. This is going to allow us to freeze more enemies, which is going to trigger all of our damage. So now we have the bread and butter, one of the big dogs of the build, Blizzard, into Mage's Blizzard. When cast above 50 mana, Blizzard's duration lasts four more seconds. This is huge. Blizzard does increase damage to frozen enemies. That's okay. But we only, again, need one point in this because Blizzard itself is not doing the damage. It's our ice spikes, what we get from our gear and legendary powers, which we'll go over in a second. 
Next, we have Inner Flames into Devouring Blaze. 30% increased critical strike damage against burning enemies. If they are also immobilized, it's 75%. Now, I will go over one piece of gear that I would like to make a change on to help this go to 75%. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Next, into our ultimate skills. No ultimates, but all passives. So these are the three passives that you want. Okay, you want Permafrost for more damage against elites. Icy Touch for more damage against vulnerable enemies. Everything is going to be vulnerable. And then three points into Frigid Breeze, which is also going to give us on a lucky hit against vulnerable enemies. Mana back, which is going to help us just decimate everything. Now, I have three points into Horror Frost because of my amulet. So this is just bonus extra damage. However, you do not need this for the build. If you didn't want to have the Frigid Breeze here, you could put points in there. But I highly recommend having Frigid Breeze. Then down to our key pass, of which everybody goes back and forth on. Typically, when you're playing Ice Shards, Avalanche is the best. However, Ice Shards is our secondary damage. The Spikes from Blizzard is our main damage, and we're doing Shatter. After Freeze expires, enemies explode for 25% of the damage you dealt to them while frozen. They're going to be frozen so fast that this is going to be a huge amount of damage, and against AoE uh, mobs of monsters, you're going to deal an insane amount of damage, okay? Okay. You just absolutely decimate everything on the screen and just explode everything. So Shatter is the key passive that we're going with. Okay, now let's get into the gear here and just show you what I have. So when it comes to the gear pieces here, there's a few that you must have and some you could probably switch out. And we're going to go over one that you can definitely switch out. So in our helmet, Frost Nova gains an additional charge, but the cooldown per charge is increased by 30%. That's okay. Two casts of Frost Nova is insane. We can just bounce from mob to mob, freezing everything, dropping blizzards, and just demolishing the entire map. Now, you may be asking, like, well, doesn't the extra cooldown here hurt? No, because once we destroy everything we, uh, with them being frozen, this is going to reset. This is going to help on our abilities here when I talked about elemental attunement. We're going to be blowing everything up, so this really helps reset, reset our cooldowns of our defensive skills, which really helps this a lot. Next into our chest piece, we have casting ice armor makes you unstoppable for three seconds. Now, this is where one you could swap out, okay? This build requires no uniques, and I really like that it doesn't, okay? Now, the one swap here I would make is, and I don't have it, is the while flame shield is active, you can move freely between enemies and make them immobilized. That is the one main switch I would do. Because when they are immobilized, we get 75% increased damage instead of 30 on a critical strike, okay? So that is the only swap. I just haven't found it yet for some reason. However, in that place, Ice Armor makes you unstoppable is really good because crowd control in the end game sucks. Now, whenever you do have remnants, because I'm level 100 and I have not found it at all, you would swap this out regardless of it having ice armor or the flame shield ability. You would swap it out for remnants and you're good to go. That's the reason we have it in the chest piece. In the gloves, you do more damage against mobilized stunt uh, or frozen enemies. Super strong. Uh, in our pants, we have um, disobedience for more armor because we need to be a little bit more tankier. In our boots, we have ghost walker. While we're unstoppable, we get more movement speed. Right now, with the Frost or the Ice Armor giving us Unstoppable, we have Ice Armor makes us Unstoppable, Teleport makes us Unstoppable, as well as Flame Shield. So we're always going to have this increased move speed. That's why we are so fast on the map, and I absolutely love it. Then, of course, Ice Shards in our main weapon for just the Pierce and more damage, which is huge. In our Amulet, these are the two main uh, Blizzard powers that you're going to have. When you cast Blizzard, it periodically spawns Ice Spikes that deal insane damage. Your Ice Spikes deal increased damage to frozen enemies. Everything's going to be frozen, so these Spikes are going to do an insane amount of damage. I really wish I could get this to max. I just haven't found a, a better one, but that is what you want on your Amulet. Next, we have uh, Prodigy for um, more mana regen when we pop all of our cooldowns. And then this is our other big... Uh, blizzard skill guys is while deep freeze is active uh, exploding ice spikes form in the area dealing increased cold damage we're not doing deep freeze that's the ultimate that's not the reason we take this power we take this power because your ice spikes have a 50 percent increased explosion radius okay that's the reason we take this if there was a way to really factor in deep freeze then maybe this would be okay but we don't care about that we just want the um increased uh, explosion radius 
And then last in our offhand, this is just something I've been testing. You really have an open slot here. Core mastery skills cast above 100 mana have increased critical strike chance. This just helps me with ice shards. However, you could definitely swap this out. You could do accelerating for more um, attack speed. You could do um, you could do the one where your gloves have avalanche and now it shoots twice. You could do that. You have a lot of options here um, in your offhand. You can definitely just pick whichever one you guys want. It's totally up to you. Accelerating is really, really good. Uh, you could do the you deal increased damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier because you're always going to have a barrier. So you could do Storm Swell. All of those are really, really good. I've tested Storm Swell. I prefer the um, Elementalist, but that one's up to you. But I really like this one. So that is the gear pieces, guys. It's really, really strong. Now let's get into the Paragon board. We're going to go over this very, very quickly and just kind of break this down. I'm going to kind of leave it up so you guys can pause on the screen if you need to see it. But we're taking Elementalist for non-physical damage. Then we're taking Elementalist Node for non-physical damage. I have had some people comment and ask me about doing uh, Enchanter for increased non-physical damage. And then you get the extra uh, resistance. However, because resistances are kind of not working at the moment, I opted out of Enchanter and I'm doing Elementalist for more damage. Because you're going to be dealing uh, fire, cold, and lightning when you teleport. So this is a huge boost in damage. Then we come up to the left side for elemental balance. Into our second board, we are going to be doing uh, ice fall. This killing a frozen enemy grants you 15% of your maximum life as a barrier. This is why I said we didn't need the passive because everything is going to be frozen. So you're always going to have a barrier. So we're going to come in and grab polar rhyme for more damage against chilled. We're grabbing Keeper of the Winter for damage reduction against Chill. This is going to help us stay alive. We're taking Frost for more damage against Chill. In our node here, Frostbite, our legendary glyph or our rare glyph. You deal increased damage against chilled enemies, and then enemies deal 13% reduced damage for, uh, to you for five seconds after they are no longer frozen. They ain't going to be alive, but this is really strong. Then we're going to come over to our third board and we're going to be taking Frigid Fate. You don't need this at all. We just took it to get to the uh, rare node, which is going to be Tactician. The Cold Resist is fine, but this is more important for more vulnerable damage as well as to buff the other two nodes that are next to it, which is Chilling for more um, Cold Resist and Intelligence Boost. And then Vulnerable Damage here. Increased Vulnerable Damage is very, very important. Then we come down and we grab Oppressive for more Vulnerable Damage. Down into board four, we are taking... Burning Instinct, but we're not going to get Burning Instinct. We're going to come over and grab Smoldering Embers for more damage reduction, which is huge. Then our, our Rare Glyph is going to be Control. We do more damage against Crowd Control enemies. Remember, when they are chilled, Crowd Control. When they are stunned, Crowd Control. When they are frozen, they are also Crowd Controlled. So we're always going to have them Crowd Controlled. Huge boost here. Then we're grabbing Cinders. We don't have the 450 Willpower, but this would be an extra bonus damage. We'd have to maybe move a few... Uh, points around but we take that we come down and grab kindling for more damage against burning enemies then we grab a safeguard for damage reduction against elites with some bonus armor here <clears throat> over on our fifth board we are taking uh searing heat we're not getting the node but we come down just to grab this for an extra rare glyph slot so we're going to get ashes for more intelligence and fire resistance and then um, we're taking exploit for more damage against vulnerable enemies and uh, we're going to be able to have that increased for each enemy um, uh, for six seconds up to ten times, which is really, really strong. Then we're going to come down to our final board, which is going to be a Ceaseless Conduit. We're going to grab Hunter Killer for more damage against elites and move speed, which is really cool. Then we get uh, Gavalancing Catalyst uh, just for increased intelligence. That's the only reason we really have this, just to get to the decks here. But our Rare Glyph is going to be Flame Feeder. More damage against burning enemies. Remember, with our enchantment slots that we're about to go over, everything is always on fire. So that is the Paragon board, guys. Our enchantment slots are going to be Firebolt, which is what you always take, which is kind of, it kind of sucks that you have to take this in one of your slots, but it makes you the most sustained and do the most damage for the Sork build. So now in your uh, second enchantment slot, this is where you have the most <clears throat> customizability. Uh, I have Ice Shards here, which just allows you to um, have ice shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies however teleport here is really really good guys it makes you even faster gives you more unstoppable and it allows you to do that with a short range teleport it's really cool however you could do flame shield if you feel like you die a lot you could do frost nova 
Uh, actually, no, you can't. You can't do Frost Nova. You could do Ice Armor for a chance to get a more barrier. Um, Blizzard is okay. I tested this one. It's okay. However, my best choices would be either Ice Shards or Teleport. Teleport is actually really fun. But I like the extra damage just to kind of blow stuff up. So, guys, that is the build for my Blizzard Ice Shards Hybrid. This is really, really strong and super fast. The rotation on the skills goes really, really smooth. You basically teleport in. Uh, pop your ice armor if you need to and then drop frost nova hit a blizzard and then you just blow everything up it's insane or what you do is you drop a blizzard there teleport in frost nova they all die it's absolutely insane guys so that is my blizzard hybrid build of the sorceress supreme like the video comment down below let me know what you guys think and make sure to subscribe if you guys are new and as always stay gaming and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace